Okay, we are starting question 2.2 now, and you'll see that I have my annex to A. This is the first question that requires my annexes, so please make sure that you have them with you and that you're working through them with me. Right, so it says annex to A shows an adapted municipal account statement, property rates and service account of Mr. Fortune. Use annex to A to answer the questions that follow. 2.2.1, write down the valuation date, right, month and year of Mr. Fortune's property. So we have to look through this, make sure that we understand. It's quite useful to have a um, highlighter with you. Here you see the valuation date and you see that that's the date there. Now, you could be saying, but I don't know that 07 and the 01, I don't know which one's the month and which one's the day. Well, go look in the rest of the statement and see what the format is. Here's another date. It says 27th of the 11th. So we know, oh, sorry, that that is the day and that's the month. So it's going to be the first of the seventh month, which is July of 2013, they asked for the month and the year. So we're going to say for this question, 2.2.1, it was July 2013, 2.2.2. Right, so that's pretty easy, not too bad. Next question says, name the municipal services that Mr. Fortune is charged for. Okay, so we have water and sewage, property rates is not municipal, and then we have refuse. Okay, so that's what he is being charged for. So let's go write that down. Water and sewage and refuse. Refuse is just when they pick up your rubbish, right? So make sure that you've written all of that down. I'm just going to move this up here. Okay, 2.2.3. So it says, determine the end date of the reading period of the statement. Okay. So there's the beginning date, and it says 23 days. Now, this is where you need to be like, okay, how many days are there in November? So I don't know if you remember this little trick, right? Or if you've done this, you go January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. Everything between the knuckles is 30 days. Everything on top of the knuckle, on top of the knuckles, right? You generally are looking at your 31 days, right? Obviously, when I go February, it's 28 days. So that's an exception. But November was down here. So it's 30 days. So if we start on the 27th, we have three days in November, and then 20 days in December. So the end date of this was 20 December. Okay, so this is a common question as well. Just checking whether you can access basic numbers. So your answer here is 20 December, but not just any 20 December. 20 December, what year is this? 20 16, okay? Be careful not to say 2017 because this is when it was issued, January, but we're looking at 2016, right? Um, because it's December before we get into the January of the next year. Okay, common mistakes that students make. 2.2.4 says, show how the daily average water consumption of 0 0.522 kil kiloliters was calculated. Okay. So we see here that the consumption was 12 kiloliters and we noticed over 23 days. So what we're going to say is we're going to say, okay, my daily consumption is going to be 12 kiloliters divided by 23 days. And we put that in here, 12 divided by 23. And that gives us 0, 0.522 if we round it off to three decimal places, 0, 0.522 kiloliters per day. Okay, and that's how we got that answer. Not difficult. Okay, I'm just going to rip this page off and then we can continue, right? So make sure that you're writing your units, etc. And you're making sure that you are writing this in such a way that it's accessible to your marker. Because you don't want your marker to be looking for marks. You want them to be like, oh, obvious. Okay. 2.2.5 says name and explain. So there's two things we have to do. Which services on the statement, which service on the statement is a variable expense? Okay. So we know that your property rates is going to be set based on size, sewage is set based on size, and refuge is just a standard rate. So the only thing that's variable is going to be water because it's based on how much you use. Okay, so we're going to say, uh, let me make sure you can see, 2.2.5, you're going to say water, right, varies according, or you can say um, cost varies according 
to amount of water used. Okay, so if one month you have people to stay and you're using more water, etc., you're going to be charged more. Makes sense. Okie dokes. Let's look at 2.2.6. It says determine the missing values for A and B. Okay, that's our first and our second question there. So let's go look. 2.2.6A. Let's see. Okay, so A is over here and it literally gives us the calculation. So all we're going to do is we're going to plug that calculation into our calculator. So 690123 times by 0, 0.0069160 divided by 12. And our answer there is 397. So literally write that out, okay? Because they're going to give you a mark for writing that out, knowing that that was the calculation that they wanted you to do. So don't ever make them guess about what you're doing. Okay, if you put that into your calculator, it's 397.57. Make sure that your point is a little bit better than mine there. Oh, not 57, 67. Okay, no need to round off because there's only two decimal places. Then 2.2.6b, right, let's go find b. So b is after I've subtracted 115,27 from this amount. So I'm going to say 397.67 and I'm going to subtract this amount here, which was less rates on first 200K of market value. So they've given us a little rebate there. Rebate means a reduction. So put that in, subtract 115.27, and there is your answer of 282.40. Remember to put two decimal places, even though there's only one here. If there's only one, it means the next one is zero. Okay, so just be very careful about that. Right, we have a couple questions left here. Let's now go to 2.2.7. So 2.2.7 says, calculate the monthly sewage rate, excluding that, per square meter of this property. Okay, let's look. There's the amount there, okay? And we can see that it's not subject to VAT at the moment because, look, they add VAT on later. So we know that we don't have to do a VAT calculation. They've done it for us. But they just want the cost, right, per meter squared. That's what it said. Let's go back here. Calculate the monthly sewage rate per square meter. So we're going to say this amount here, total amount, divided by the square meters. 2.2.7. We're going to say 2.2.98.36 divided by my square meters because that says my round value per meter squared. Put that into your calculator. Make sure that you type it in correctly. I know I'm guilty of doing that sometimes. And my rate is, and remember you always have to put it to um, two decimal places per meter squared. Right, answer. Okay, so just be careful. Round value per meter squared. It is a rate, remember? Rates we're looking at two different units. Okay, almost done here. Two questions left for this little sub-question. 2.2.8, write down the unpaid amount for December. Okay, so we know that this charge is for January. Okay, that's for January. This outstanding balance, that was for November. This is for December, and it's being paid in January. So the outstanding amount for December is just that. Um, 880,10. So that's for December. Interestingly, in the memo, it actually says that the outstanding amount, right, for um, December is actually this amount. But that doesn't make sense because this whole charge here is for December. So in my mind, 880,10 is the amount that you should be saying. If you disagree with me, that's on you, right? I <laughs> want that's on you. I'm making that sound so aggressive. But it just doesn't make sense for me, okay? So if you understand it in a better way, right? You can comment. But for me, that's November because that was a previous account outstanding balance. So that's for November. This is now for December and it's being paid now in January. So for me, it's it's obviously this, this previous account outstanding should have been paid in December. So you could think about it that way. This should have been, it was for November, but paid in December. This amount here was for December, but paid in Jan. So I'm interpreting it as the amount for December. The memo is interpreting it as the amount for November, but supposed to be paid in December. So for me, either saying either of those amounts, right, would make sense. 
the memo wanted this. To me, this is the one that makes more sense. But just to indicate to you how it goes, right? Obviously, it's not ideal if you're like, oh, but there's two answers now. Obviously, they debate these things that go through it and they play it towards your favor if they think that the interpretation is not ideal from like a the way that the, the question was worded, right? So they play towards your favor. So don't stress there, but think about it both ways. Okay, 2.2.9, last question here. Mr. Fortune paid um, 1,800 Rand on 15 Jan 2017. Name the type of rounding he used to obtain this amount. Okay, so we see that he owed 1799.43. Okay, but instead of paying that exact amount, he actually just paid 1,800. So that is rounding up, rounding off, rounding up to the nearest 100. To me, it is just rounding off. It's normal rounding off, right? So if you rounded that off, um, to the nearest hundred or the nearest whole rand. Um, or, I mean, if you round it off to the nearest whole rand, you'd actually have rounded it down. So you're rounding it up, rounding off to the nearest hundred or um, rounding up, rounding up to nearest rand. Well, it's not nearest. So rounding up to, to you can just say rounding up. Okay, right. So those are the types of rounding you're doing there. So not a difficult question, but a bit of interpretation then. You can see that these last two questions, it was a bit fudgy, right? You were a bit like, mm, okay, I see. And you have to really think these things through. They're like thinking level four questions where you have to kind of really think through. Okay, let's now go into the last question of this question. You're doing well. <laughs>